So now that we know how to find the change of basis matrix, um, which is a representation of the identity matrix with respect to a pair of bases for that vector space, um, I want to use change of basis matrices to explain how we can change map representations with respect to different bases. So here's the setup. I have a linear map F from V to W and a representation A of that map with respect to bases B and D for the domain and codomain. So notation, A is equal to the representation of F with respect to the bases B and D. Um, so this matrix represents F. What that means is that if you have the representation of a vector, that is the vector whose, um, whose entries tell you how to write V as a linear combination of the basis vectors from B. So like the entries would be the coefficients in that linear combination. <laughs> so um, you take that vector, you multiply by A, and that changes that representation into a representation of F of V with respect to the basis of the codomain D. So if you know how to write V as a linear combination in B, and you have your representation matrix, then that tells you essentially how to write f of v as a linear combination of the basis vectors in D. So the question for today is what if we want to change bases? What if we want to represent f with respect to different bases, b hat and d hat? And the idea, as you might expect, is to use change of basis matrices. And let's do this uh, mostly through example and also some um, diagram chasing a little bit. So let's consider the map F from R2 to R2. Um, and F is given by F of XY is equal to uh, this matrix here times XY. And this matrix here, the entries are cosine of pi over 4, negative sine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 4. So um, what is... Uh, what is interesting about A, uh, sorry, let's call this matrix A. So uh, A is an example of a rotation matrix. So A is a rotation matrix. Um, and uh, so I just think it's, these examples come up all the time and so it's uh, just kind of good to be familiar with these. So. Um, as a quick example, if I were to do cosine of pi over 4, negative sine of pi over 4, so if I take my matrix and I multiply it by, let's say, the vector 1, 0, then what does that do to that vector? So my output here would be cosine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 4, which is equal to, both entries are equal to square root of 2 over 2, then that, um, if I look at my vectors here, so the vector 1, 0 would be right here. So 1, 0 is right here. And then uh, multiplying by a takes me to this vector right here square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And the angle between these two is equal to pi over 4. So multiplying uh, the vector 1, 0 by our rotation matrix, change the angle, um, sorry, it rotated uh, this vector to a vector with the same length, same magnitude, um, but rotated it by an angle of pi over 4, where pi, of four, pi, pi over 4 is the angle that showed up um, in all of these uh, inputs for the trig functions there. Okay, cool. So that's just what our map is doing. Um, okay. Um, anytime that you have uh, a function f from rn to rm given by f of vector is equal to matrix times vector, then um, 
then immediately you can say that A is the representation of that map F, but it has to be with respect to the standard bases EN and EM for the domain and codomain here. So uh, in particular, we are mapping from R2 to R2 for us. Um, let me maybe put this over here and make it red so that we don't get confused with the rest of what we're trying to do. Um, and so, yeah, we can say that if B and D are equal to the standard basis for R2, then uh, A, our rotation matrix, represents F with respect to bases B and D. All right, cool. Um, so this is our setup here. Um, we have a map F, we have a representation of F with respect to the standard bases, and maybe uh, we are given a different pair of bases here. So let me bring this up a little bit. Um, a different pair of bases, uh, let's say B hat and D hat. B hat has the vectors 1, 1, and 0, 2. D hat has the vectors negative 1, 0, and 2, 3. And uh, I want to find the representation of F with respect to this new pair of bases. Okay. So um, here is uh, one diagram, one picture that you could have in your head. So, um, okay. Let me, let me go to green for a second. So, um, up here I have R2 with respect to the basis B, and then F takes R2 to R2, um, but with respect to the basis D is how we're thinking of it. Um, of course, B and D are equal here, uh, but in general, they won't always be equal. Maybe you're mapping from R2 to R7 or something like that, it doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, uh, in green, I have the matrices that represent the, um, the maps for each given arrow. So A is the representation of F with respect to uh, the bases B on the left side of the arrow and D on the right side of the arrow. Um, similarly, I have the identity map going from R2 to R2, but over here it's with respect to B hat and B. And then I have the identity map from R2 to R2 with respect to D and D hat. Um, okay, so uh, then I have P and Q are the matrices that represent those corresponding maps. So in particular, uh, P and Q, P and Q are change of bases matrices, or change of basis matrices. Um, and A represents our map F. And then what is what is M over here? So let me move that down a little bit. Okay, cool. Let me remind you what it means um, for a matrix to represent, represent a map, um, because that's going to be very important here. So let's say that I have the representation of a vector V with respect to B, then uh, I could multiply this by A, so A times the representation V with respect to B is equal to the representation of um, F of V with respect to, uh, that should be D, go away, okay, um, great, uh, and uh, let's do that for the bottom bottom arrow as well, so like from here to here. So if I have the representation of a vector V with respect to B hat, then um, if M represents the map F, M is the thing that we're looking for, I'll remind you. Um, <clears throat> so 
this should get sent to m times the representation b hat with respect to v, which should be equal to the representation with respect to d hat of f of v. Okay, and p and q are change of basis matrices, so that changes the representation of a vector with respect to bases uh, b and b hat or d and d hat and so if i have the representation of v with respect to b hat then i can multiply that by p on the left so p times the representation with respect to b hat of v and that should be equal to the representation of the with respect to b. So I'm multiplying by p on the left, and now I'm rep represented with respect to b instead of b hat, because I changed bases. I changed bases. Okay. Um, should use that arrow instead, because these are elements and not vector spaces. Anyway. Uh, and then... <clears throat> Okay, and then I could take this representation, multiply it by A to get my representation of F of V with respect to D. We already said that. Um, and now I can multiply this vector, multiply that uh, times my change of basis matrix Q to change the representation of this vector from being represented with respect to D to being re represented with respect to D hat. And so that should be equal to Q times rep d of f of v, yeah, okay. And this should be equal to that. Okay, so um, let's look a little closer at this diagram. Uh, I don't know what color is gonna be good or not, but. So uh, I wanna go from uh, here, here to here, here, I want to get this, um, and the way that we can do that is we can start with our representation with respect to B, and then map to this representation by multiplying by P on the left, and then uh, multiplying by A on the left, and then multiplying by Q on the left. So uh, if I if I were to let me let me copy and paste all this stuff real quick. Let me get rid of these highlights. So copy and paste it and make it really small so that I can say things. Uh, okay. So what can we say? We can say that the representation of d hat with respect to, sorry, the re representation of f of b with respect to d hat is equal to q times representation of f of v with respect to d. And this is, um, this is equal to a times the representation of f of uh, of v with respect to b by that highlighted equation right there and and the representation of v with respect to b is equal to q t sorry this is q times a so it is equal to p times representation of v with respect to b hat um and so that is uh, exactly what we were looking for. So we have the representation yeah this is this is exactly what we're looking for because we are looking for this over here. We're looking for a matrix M that satisfies this equation over here. We want a matrix M such that 
if I multiply the representation of V with respect to B hat, multiply on the left by our matrix M, which for us is going to be equal to um, Q times A times P, then that should give me the representation of F of V with respect to D hat. So in other words, M equals Q A P is our representation of F with respect to B hat and D hat. And so yeah, that's everything that we need to do for that. Um, so what we need to do is we just need to find our change of basis matrices, Q and P, and then multiply Q times A times P, and that's gonna be our representation that we are looking for. So really all of this amounts to uh, finding change of basis matrices and multiplying three matrices together. Okay, cool. So let's do that. Um, and one more thing that's going to make our lives easier for doing that is to note the following. So, um, so a change of basis vector matrix looks like representation uh, of the identity with respect to B and B hat. This is a matrix. If I were um, to take the inverse of this matrix and recall that all change of basis matrices are invertible matrices. In fact, a matrix is a change of basis matrix if and only if it's an invertible matrix. An invertible matrix. Um, so uh, the inverse of this matrix happens to just be uh, the change of basis matrix um, that switches um, the order of the bases here. So instead of going from a representation of B to a representation of B hat, you go the other way around from B hat to B. And so that'll simplify some calculations for us, uh, which we'll see in it, we'll shoot, see very shortly, um, because for us, so let's, let's get back to our example now that we understand the theory, so, um, okay, so this is our matrix A, so we have A, and we also have bases B hat and D hat given by here. Let's just copy and bring all this stuff down with us just so that we have everything. Yeah, that's good. So here's our A and we have our B hat and our D hat. So let's find P and Q. Um, I want the representation. Uh, okay, so P was what? P was the representation of the identity with respect to B hat and B. So I need to um, start, start at B hat and then go to B. Start at B hat, then go to B. And then Q is equal to the representation of D and D hat, the identity, right? Start at D and then go to D hat. Is that what we have? Yeah, we start at D, then go to D hat. Okay, cool. Um, so um, B and D are both the standard bases for R2. Um, so P is gonna be pretty easy to find because we can uh, say that, so to represent um, the identity with respect to B hat and B, I write the vectors from B hat in terms of the uh, vectors from B, and B is the standard basis 
Um, so this is equal to 1 times 1, 0 plus 1 times 0, 1. And that calculation is pretty easy. And of course, 0, 2 is equal to um, uh, 0 times the first vector plus 2 times the second. And so P is equal to 1, 1, 0, 2. Right? If I multiply this by like, if I multiply this by 1, 0, then I would get uh, 1, 1. Yeah, so it should take 1, 1, uh, it should take 1, 0 to 1, 1, and that's exactly what we want. Okay, cool. Good. So that's our P. And what's our Q? Well, I would need to write um, the standard basis vectors as linear combinations of negative 1, 0, and 2, 3. And that seems hard. Um, I don't know how to do that off the top of my head without doing some row reduction. And so uh, I don't want to, and I won't, um, because I can do an uh, easier thing by just rep uh, recognizing that Q inverse is equal to the representation um, of the identity with respect to just changing the order of those bases. And because the standard basis is now second, then uh, the representation of um, the vectors, so negative one zero is going to be represented by itself with respect to the standard basis. So it's equal to negative one times one zero plus zero times zero one. And then what's the other one, two, three, is equal to two times the first plus three times the second. So two, three is represented by itself. Negative one zero is represented by itself. So Q inverse is equal to negative one, zero, two, three. And then therefore Q is equal to, um, okay, so I divide by um, AD minus BC, which would be negative three. And then I switch my diagonals and I make my off diagonals negative. And so um, Q is equal to negative one, uh, this should be positive a third, and then this should be positive two thirds, and that'll be zero. Okay, cool. So we have our P, uh, we have our Q, and we have our matrix A, which I'm just gonna make green. Break down, okay. And then we also know that our matrix M should be equal to Q times A times P. And so all I have to do is just multiply those things together. So Q times A times P. And so yeah, that's it. And then you um, you can multiply this uh, this out, and you get a uh, you get a two by two matrix, and that matrix would be the representation of F with respect to B hat and D hat. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna multiply it out. I think it's fine to leave it as uh, this for at least for instructional purposes. Um, but I think the notes 